Years ago this October, the Westgate Bridge in Melbourne collapsed. Uh, it was a huge tragedy and it killed 35 people. And a few people have asked me to do uh, a post on the cause of the collapse, which is quite a challenge because we have to try and explain what is a very complicated collapse in just a couple of minutes. But this is the quick version. Um, the bridge in Melbourne had concrete spans and steel spans. We're interested in the steel spans. They were what are called a uh, box girder construction. So think of them as shoe boxes, long shoe boxes. Uh, they have a big void in the middle. And for the west. 50 years ago this October, the Westgate Bridge in Melbourne collapsed. Uh, it was a huge tragedy and it killed 35 people. And a few people have asked me to do uh, a post on the cause of the collapse, which is quite a challenge because we have to try and explain what is a very complicated collapse in just a couple of minutes. But this is the quick version. Um, the bridge in Melbourne had concrete spans and steel spans. We're interested in the steel spans. They were what are called uh, box girder construction. So think of them as shoe boxes, long shoe boxes. Uh, they have a big void in the middle. And the, the outside of them is made out of steel and they're quite thin sides compared to, to the size of the spans. Um, the interesting thing about the bridge in Melbourne was that it is one of five box girder bridges that collapsed around the world around 1970. So there was some underlying issues with this form of construction. Now, the, the way they were building the bridge in Melbourne was a little different to some of the other bridges they'd built in the, the world. They would build each of the spans on the ground and then they'd lift them up into position at the top of the piers of the bridge. So this is 50 metres up in the air. Now, because that was a significant lift, what they actually did was they took each of these steel spans and they cut them down the middle entrance. So you ended up with two half spans, and that was to minimise the weight. Now, when they were working on the east side of the bridge, they lifted one of these half spans off its trestles, and immediately the top flange, you know, the top um, of our shoebox, essentially, buckled upwards because of the stresses. Now, they could have dropped the span back down again onto the trestles, removed the buckle, and, and moved on. But what they did was they pressed on. They decided that they would lift that half span up in the air, they moved it up into the air, and they were going to now attempt to remove the buckle while it was 50 metres up in the air. Um, but once it was up there, there was no way of actually removing the load off this thing. Um, so how did they solve the problem? Well, the way they solved the problem was they took out some of the bolts in the top flange. And remember, these are the bolts that are actually holding the bridge together. Um, they then hammered down the top flange till it was flat again. They drilled new holes or widened some of the existing holes, put the bolts back in, and they had removed the buckle. And they'd got away with it. Now, if we then go to the west side of the bridge, they were doing the same thing. Now, they had added more stiffeners in the bridge to make sure it didn't buckle on the way up. They got their two half spans 50 metres up into the air, and it was on the west side that they discovered they had a problem at this point. And the problem was that one half span was higher than the other. So how do you get this span down so that you could join them up and connect them. Well, the solution they came up with was that we'll put some load. We'll put some concrete on the span that's too high. That will deflect it downwards. We can line them up, connect the spans. They brought 51 ton of concrete up on top of the Westgate Bridge to make this happen. They got them aligned, and they started to connect them. When they had them partially connected, there suddenly was a buckle that appeared and ran across the bridge. So the one thing they've been trying to avoid on the western span, they now got, while it was up in the air, heavily loaded with concrete. The bridge sat there for a month when they tried to work out how to deal with this situation. And eventually what they decided was they would use the same solution on the west side of the bridge as they had on the east side. And that was, let's remove some of the bolts off the top flange, let's flatten the top flange back down and re-bolt it together. Now, while they'd got away with that on the eastern span, things were quite different on the western span. And the issue on the western span was the buckle was much bigger and they had 51 tonne of concrete on the span. They started in October to unbolt some of the bolts in the top flange. When they got to 37 bolts, the bridge basically had enough. The remaining bolts were now overloaded. They were carrying too much stress because the other bolts had been removed. They sheared and the entire span collapsed and killed 35 people. Now, why did this happen? Well, it happened because of a mixture of design and construction issues. There was underlying design issues, as we said, and there was also problems with the methodology they were using for construction. And as we said, there were five, four other bridges around the world that collapsed um, around this 
time. Now, if you'd like to know more about the Westgate Bridge Collapse, we've got a podcast that we released some years ago available, um, and the link is there. We've also got a blog post if you want to read that, and if you want to get really into the technical detail, there's a, a structural engineer um, article available as well. And that is why the Westgate Bridge collapsed.